Welcome to the Basin Conspiracy. I'm Inyash Brodsky. I'm Jess Dickey. I'm Steven Zuby. Sons of bitches. <laughs> <laughs> Look at what you've started. <laughs> yeah, this is happening now. I'm going to be a flying squirrel next time. <laughs> Ooh. They're so cute. They're really cute. I can be Boris. You can be what? Boris. Is Boris. That, and someone has to be Natasha. Oh, okay. Because she's the flying squirrel. Actually, we could get a moose. Drake could be moose. Did you really never watch Oh, wa- Rocky, Rocky and Bullwinkle. Bullwinkle. Okay. Yeah. Was one of them a flying squirrel? I thought it was just a squirrel. Yeah. No, 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 he was like wearing a plate helmet because he was a flying squirrel. Oh, great. Yeah. yeah, this was slightly before my time. Well, I mean, the I fact that you were just before my time too, but it was just so fucking funny. The fact that you were just railing against web apps on, or phone apps makes me think that maybe it was exactly at your time. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Screw you guys. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. Okay, so back on topic. Yes. Didn't take us too far to get, or too long to get far afield. So. Yeah, we are sort of continuing. We are not continuing the conversation from last time, but we are continuing to talk about gender stuffs because uh just wanted to talk about some of the um what gender is, I guess, right? Yeah. Um I don't know. I thought we were also going to pick up where we left off last time, but we oh, okay. don't have to. I mean, if there's more things to be said, I will be more than willing to keep going there. And we're very smartly recording this the day before the first part of this episode comes out, so we yes. don't have to respond to anyone's thoughts on it. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yet. Yet. We'll see if we even bother. Oh, like, we'll see how it goes. All right. All right. Yeah. yeah. Nervous. Eh. I don't know. Don't I, be able to be great. I want to be able to talk about, like, the whole thing that really attracts me to rationality is this is a community of people that don't taboo talking about pretty much anything. It's true. It doesn't mean that you're excited to talk about everything. Yeah. No. Like, some, some people will still, like, I don't know, like, if you're talking, I'm trying to think of just some other, any other hot button topic, um, you know, like that race. Google memo a couple years ago, right? Or race. It's like, yes, these are conversations and they're fun and et cetera. But like, that doesn't mean that like, you're not trepidatious because especially in a public conversation like this, that people are going to be like, well, now you need to address this because you guys missed this important part or you mischaracterized this. But that's this the kind and... of, I don't know, like, I, I actually want to receive that kind of feedback because if they're right, then it's like, oh, then I need to update like, that's kind of what I'm looking for by doing this. Like, I have feelings of being non-binary or not having, you know, a binary gender identity. And I'm kind of just viewing it through the lens of here's what I know about other people's experiences and how they've expressed them. And here's what I feel like I should be doing about this. But I have a lot of doubt myself. Yeah, I, I do. Mean, well, when gender stuff started happening to me, I was just like, uh, <laughs> <laughs> why, <laughs> oh, brain, man. Why? I do also like the conversation and the back and forth and the listener feedback stuff. I mean, at some point, I do get tired of it. I think there was one topic that we went on for three episodes with feedback. And after that, I was like, I just, I don't want to address this anymore. Was that UBI or? I don't remember. I think there's more than once, actually, that this sort of thing has happened. <laughs> yes, that, that's what I'm talking about. I'm not saying I don't want criticism and, and feedback. It's mainly just like how vehement and how long is it going to be. Yeah. Uh, um, but yeah. yeah. I believe, like, I don't know, with the hot button topics, uh, people do tend to get really emotional about them and then like... But that's the kind of stuff that I want to be able to be better at talking about, yeah. if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. I like the rationalist community framework of let's look at what the facts show, um, and then like you can present both your opinions, and then we'll just evaluate them. And... Yeah. Facts. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, yeah. You no longer believe in facts, Stephen? We're in a post-facts society. <laughs> <laughs> you uh, have your facts, and I'll have my facts. God, right. I can't even finish that sentence. Okay. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. All right. All righty. So where would we like to embark today? Um, I was kind of trying to frame last uh, post's discussion around doing a double crux on kind of where you and I disagreed. Mm-hmm. And I was actually editing the episode and going back and listening to it. I realized that kind of, and I think we kind of realized this while we were talking about it too, but I was kind of misunderstanding your argument. Um it seemed like we were kind of making two separate arguments where it, you were kind of saying, I just don't want to be forced to use uh, pronouns that, you know, somebody else's pronouns for like, uh, do, do you want to actually phrase like what you're, I don't want to put words in your mouth and I forget the exact way you phrased it. Um, the, what I was saying more or less is that I don't want to have to uh, find out what everyone's gender is and memorize it and then overrule what, uh, I want to see like what my eyes are seeing, which is not the right way to put it, but what... What just... your intuition's telling you? Yeah, exactly. Like, I don't... I, I I am... When I use pronouns, they are the pronouns as they correlate to perceived sex. 
or in some cases the the target sex that someone you know wants is is striving for and like i don't i don't care about all the other stuff and i hate how it interferes with my thought process and how i feel like i'm constantly having to self-censor if i'm trying to be uh very accommodating of my friends yeah and i was kind of misunderstanding your argument as being against the validity of trans or non-binary experiences or whether trans people's gender identity is quote-unquote real which I, you know, after talking to you, realized that wasn't what you were trying to say at all. It was really just about, I don't want you to do these language things. Right. And yeah, and then we were kind of talking about there being like camp one versus camp two, where gender is either something that's projected by the viewer onto the viewee, or uh, it's the felt experience of the person to whom it's being applied. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I don't really know if we can either, you know, support one or the other of those with facts. We can say how it's been used historically. But even that's very muddy because I think that, you know, like sex and gender have just been used interchangeably for such a long time. And I think it's only like, I forget what, I think it was since the 60s, probably like with the, you know, start of the new wave feminist movement, where they started trying to separate it out and say, well, sex is anatomy and gender is psychology, which I do like, like, I'm glad that there is that distinction and I wish people would actually use it that way, but they still don't. And I think mostly it's because of squeamishness around people using the word sex because we're such a fucking puritanical society. Yeah. I mean, it's like putting, <laughs> which I guess this turns out to be a historical myth, but like putting um, little pants on the legs of pianos because you can't be showing naked legs anywhere. <laughs> I've never heard that. I, I had heard it a number of times about how crazy Puritans were and then later turned out not to be true. That's not the reason they put the little, you know, uh, clothing around the legs. Well, I heard so much bullshit about, like, you know, with Albion Seed about how crazy the Puritans were that, like, <sighs> yeah, that's just kind of a drop in the bucket. Right. <laughs> but. It's, it's believable. Yeah. <laughs> it's not the weirdest thing. For my thought, just briefly on the etymology of, like, the the uses of word gender and sex like i am i the only one who's intensely uninterested in like the history of words uh, like, probably i'm, I think you're I'm, I'm the, rephrase that I'm, I'm interested in like oh this used to mean that that's interesting yeah. like in a in a completely abstract sense but never from like what i'm what we're talking about like if it if it means this and it's meant this to everybody who's talking about it for like the last generation then like i don't care what people were using 400 years ago to mean this or that right like especially if someone's going to make an argument well because they used it this way 400 years ago it's like um like the word fag mm -hmm. uh, in British, that's a cigarette. And in American English, that's a pejorative term for a, for a gay person. Mm -hmm. But it's apparently also a bundle of sticks that you'd use to set somebody a, a fire when you're burning them at the, at the stake or something. And it's like, so if you say the word fag, you're really meaning this. It's like, I'm not really meaning that. <laughs> and it's bullshit for you to pretend that I am. Yeah. Right. If, if, if I'm, if I'm asking to bum a fag, it means I want a cigarette. Right. <laughs> if I'm British, if I say it, <laughs> British. if I say it, in a correct, if I say it in a correct accent, mm. if I am an asshole in America and I say that dude's a fag, it means that I'm an asshole. It doesn't mean that I want to kill them. Yeah. Right. So to point out that 300 years ago, it used to mean that, you know, this, the bundle of sticks you'd use to set people on fire. Like that doesn't, I don't think it was a bundle of sticks used to set people on fire. My understanding was just a faggot is a bundle of sticks. So haha, -ha, gay people, right? Bundle of sticks. Oh, I guess I, I I've definitely heard maybe I mean, not even the used to set people on fire, but I've heard it mean I've heard people, at least in apparent earnestness, say, "Oh, because it used to mean because you used to be able to use a a faggot or a fag or whatever it was called of sticks to you know you could use that as a kindling for a fire or something." Um, Therefore, in that sort of situation. <laughs> I, yeah, I that, that, I that third, always something along the lines of uh, the since you know faggots were small bundles of sticks often used to start fires. Uh, they would use them to start the fires when they burned the witches and beforehand they would like kill the gays and so the gays were like the faggots to warm up the fire for the witches or something. That's... I don't know. Which I think was also bullshit. But yeah, even, even... I, I'm very skeptical that that's the yeah. etymology. But, but, it's but too true... much of a just so story. But true or not, like that if someone's going to say therefore you want, you're, you're like, you know, this is like meaning that you want to kill them or something, I'm going to call horseshit on that. Right, right. Another example that's maybe... Uh, better illustrates my point i remember at some point uh right when i stopped watching the walking dead was when they brought on negan mm -hmm. who was played by john winchester's dad or john winchester from uh i forget his name as an actor he played the comedian in uh watchman yeah and he did the whole you know eeny meeny miny mo and then he beat people to death with his barbed wire covered bat and it was hilarious well <laughs> and awful but it was he was just a great psycho bad guy 
Um, I have no idea how I made it that far into the series. It wasn't fun. Um, but someone wore a shirt with like that said "Eeny Meeny Miny Mo" on it to school or something. Mm-hmm. This was something I read about when that episode came out like five years ago. And they either were told to take the shirt off or they got suspended or something serious. Because apparently, historically, it wasn't catch a tiger by his toe. It was catch something else that ends in I-G-E-R uh, oh. by their toe. And, like, I didn't know that. And I'm probably older than the kid wearing the shirt. And I'm going to bet the pe- that the kid, didn't, the kid wearing the shirt didn't know that. Yeah. Probably people making the shirt didn't know that. Quite possible that the people who wrote the Walking Dead comics and created the character of Negan didn't know that. Right. But if it used to me, if it used to be mean something much more sinister than it's meant for at least fifty years, and someone's going to bring that up and get somebody in trouble for it, then like that seems really stupid, yeah. right? Yep. So anyway, etymology of words. I'm, I I bring up that long digression because I guess that's my bias coming into this. That if there's going to be, unless it's a compelling discussion of well, here's why it means this or something, I'm going to be skeptical. Um, but. That doesn't mean that'll be completely. Re- it'll, it doesn't mean that it, you won't be able to break down our resistance to it. It just means that I'm, you might encounter some that is there, sort of just by default, but is open to being, you know, obviously. Yeah, I find flexed. etymologies very interesting. It's just like they're fascinating to read about, but I agree that they shouldn't necessarily guide usage. Thank you for very succinctly making the point that I tried to make that I spent five minutes not making. Sure. <laughs> That's exactly what I was yeah. trying to say. Okay. Yeah, I also, um, I mean, I, th- I think it's really funny that you had said, am I the only one not interested in etymology? Because I'm just remembering, like, all of my Philly Less Wrong meetups were sidetracked at various points by discussions about the etymology of a certain word, and then we're all just on Wikipedia on our phones. Cool. <laughs> so- and, like, people had, you know, studied Latin and Greek, so... And don't get me wrong, to the in the academic sense, I think it's interesting and, like you said, fun and interesting topic, but shouldn't guide usage and shouldn't be con- one shouldn't be able to condemn somebody for modern usage of something that used to mean something bad. That's that's gonna be my shorthand for it. Okay, that's my long-winded way of or long-winded thing to. Sorry, get us back on track, Jess. Yeah, well, I don't even know because I kind of want to go on a tangent about the meaning of words. I don't think it's a tangent either. I think this is kind of what we're talking about, like. I have heard, and while I was in my social justice phase, I've tried really hard to not use ableist words. And that means that people find the word stupid to be bad because originally it meant somebody with, like, slow mentation. That's still what it means. Same thing with retired, which is now um, considered a slur, even though originally that was the medical diagnosis. And the word dumb is someone who can't speak even though now we just mean, again, like, someone who's acting like a fool. Um, I, I forget how many others. There were a bunch of other words. There are literally I mean, a zillion. Oh, not literally a zillion. There are a ton of things like that, right? So did they literally excise all words that could be construed as an insult from the language? Because these are all just ways to insult people. Well, I actually have a document where I had a bunch of non ableist swear words that I kept and I would <laughs> substitute them. Okay. Like what? And some of them are great. I mean, uh, I, I would have to pull it back up. I don't know. But just like saying something is abhorrent <laughs> or this person is, you know, a shitlord. Okay. As opposed to something else that you might say. Okay. What else would you say? Asshole? Because that's assholes not gender either. neutral. And... <laughs> I mean, some, some people don't have assholes. <laughs> I'm pretty um, sure everyone has an asshole or they would die. Well, or they use a well, bag. Well, yeah, some people have okay. bags. I mean, there's still. So that's, a, a that's, that's ableist of you. That. That's ableist of you, shitlord. Oh, goddamn yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and for like, kind of, we were joking about saying fuckers as a gender inclusive. <laughs> <laughs> right. You know? Um, hey, boys and girls. And they're like, hey, fuckers. <laughs> <laughs> there was a. Uh, a book, and I think I brought this up before, but I remember Julia Galef had the author on not to talk so much. They talked about the content of the book, but then they talked briefly about the proposed title that I think that he then walked back on. Um, it was, I forget the the full title, but the subtitle was How to Think Like a Crazy Philosopher. Mm. Which oh, right, and you I, can't use the word crazy anymore. Well, so, oh, that was another one, right? Yeah, mm. and so like, I... But the thing is, like, in that usage, I totally get where the, what the author was going for. Mm-hmm. And it's like, here's how you think, you know, like a crazy philosopher. And yeah. you imagine and somebody, you know, eccentric, whatever, right? And basically they didn't, any of the old Greek dudes. I don't yeah. think they or were the using it as a dudes. pejorative. They if anything, it actually kind of was praise. They absolutely, right. that was exactly the intended usage that they were going for. But because crazy is a... Uh, it's a no-no word now. It, mm-hmm. It's a no-no word. And I... It's one of those things. I know this isn't the topic we're we're really on, but well, or for I, the episode, I think it but, kind of is now. Yeah, I guess, or at least for for the moment. Yeah, because this is relevant. Yeah, I guess for me, it's like you can you can make any 
basically anything super mean and pejorative, right? But there, if you're using a word like crazy, isn't that crazy, man? Hey, don't don't say crazy, man. That's not really cool. Yeah. Um, like it, it, you're missing the what I'm trying to say, and you're, it seems like you're, so someone's being pedantic, right? Mm-hmm. Um, just, likewise, I think this was a Louis C.K. joke where he talked about how Jew was both the accepted and the pejorative for a group of, for like a Jewish person, depending <laughs> on how you said it. Um, like yeah. Could, yeah. So I mean, if, if you put if you put a, a twist on it, it's like a pejorative but it, it's also the official okay word right yeah um interesting thing i just talked about with my parents last time i saw them for dinner uh the word polak is literally the word for polish person in the polish language yeah uh so i mean polak is entirely correct and when people try to say pol around me i always get really annoyed because i'm like no i'm not a fucking wooden beam out there you hang things on i'm a fucking polog that's the word use it but I was i'll show talk- you a pole Sorry. yeah right <laughs> <laughs> but i was talking with my parents and my parents were like yeah but you weren't in chicago in the early 80s when we immigrated here because apparently there was a big wave of immigration from poland around that time and uh and chicago was where almost all of them went uh, and so there was a lot of racial prejudice against Polish people because, you know, they were taking all the good gerbs and they were doing them for cheaper and working harder and just making things tough for the American. And so all these dumb Polak jokes started going around because, you know, if you can make the popular consciousness that Polaks are dumb, maybe they won't get the jobs. If nothing else, at least you feel better, right? Oh, so it became a pejorative because it people were saying it in a mean My voice. My parents were actually kind of sensitive about the word. And I mean, they're not really anymore, but... Uh, they were like, yeah, I, I still have weird feelings about that word, even though even though it is the correct word in the Polish language. Hmm. Like, well, I'm reclaiming it for us, damn it. Because <laughs> Pole sounds stupid. Yeah. I remember being a little kid and wondering why Negro <laughs> wasn't considered cool anymore. I was like, it literally just means black, and black is okay. Uh, in, the, er, in the 80s, when I was a kid, you couldn't say black. black <laughs> yeah, and I've still heard some people then. say, oh, you should call them African-Americans. And I was like, nobody calls themselves African-Americans. I like... was really <laughs> glad when in the mid-late 90s it swung back to black. Because yeah. It's just so much simpler. It's just one syllable. Yeah. I also... And African-American can be technically incorrect if they're British. Yeah. Or if they're, you know, not African. I actually Elon it... Musk. What's that? Elon Musk is oh, South yeah, African, and then, right? Oh, right. right. Yeah. And my my thing on this, before I even knew that this was the thing, which I'm I'm glad it landed on the right right side just by history, but I think of the black people whose like numbers I have or like people you know that I've interacted with a lot, I think one of them is like what you would call African American. Like one's Jamaican, one's from Canada, one's. Uh, like one or two are Caribbean, something or other. Like we don't, I, we don't talk a lot about their background, but I just knew that one of them was Caribbean or Jamaican or something. Um, but it's like, I don't, I don't think I know anybody who hails from Africa. Right. <laughs> um, not, not personally. I know people who, you know, but like it, African American makes it sound like, Oh, your, your, your skin's dark. You must be from Africa. Right. Yeah. And it's like, maybe my family's been here for 350 years. Like you don't fucking know. Yeah, maybe for, from pretty the much, Middle East. Or... Yeah. Um, pretty much every African-American has been here longer than my family. Well, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you guys got here, what, 81 or 2? Uh, 82, I think. Hmm. Wait, no. Could have been 83. I'll have to ask my parents. It's only a few years before I was born. Yeah. yeah, I don't know a lot about my ancestry. I know that some of my family members were around at least as early as the Civil War. I'm trying to think. My oh yeah, I think I mentioned of... this. Major Gilmore. That was that was my. Oh great, yeah, where Major my, was his first name. Yeah, that was his first <laughs> name. But I think he lost his left thumb. I saw his gravestone, uh, and I think he lost his left thumb in the Civil War, fighting for the North. Huh. Um, and he was either my great great grandfather or four greats. But yeah. Anyway, sidetrack. So we're talking about the definitions of words, yeah. right? I see the first point here is how do you define gender versus sex? Were you hitting on that or did you want to keep going with something else first? Um, well, I'll get to that. Uh, the like one last thing I wanted to say kind of on the track that we were going was I think that what a lot of people don't take into account, and maybe this is hard because it's subjective, but the thing you were talking about, about like the word Polak or Jew being said in certain contexts, it being pejorative or actually just descriptive. I think that there's definitely a difference between people intentionally misgendering people in a way that is meant to be harmful or just yeah. because they slip up or because it's hard or they don't know or whatever. And 
so I think it's like common for people to kind of treat them as though they were the same thing. And again, the subjectiveness may be from one's internal experience. It feels like the same thing, but it just feels like a lack of kind of analysis on the part of the person. Like I was having a hard time and I was kind of bouncing between feeling sympathy for the people that are really triggered by people using the wrong pronoun in the last episode. And then also being like, yeah, but I don't think that justifies yelling at somebody. I've seen people get way bent out of shape and scream at somebody and like tarnish their reputation for being a transphobe when like it was an honest mistake. That sucks. And by I've seen, I mean like on Tumblr. Oh, okay. <laughs> in real life. Actually, like I've only really had good experiences in real life cool. where people tend to, I don't know, I, I'm in a bubble of trans people <laughs> who are all like are liberal and kind of cool, so whatever. Yeah. This is where I put on my tinfoil hat about especially online activity being intentionally divisive by non-actual honest actors. So, mm -hmm. like, we talked about this at some point post-Trump where, like, a, a large part of the the, the online um, support was not American-based. Mm. And it was there to just, like, you know, stir controversy or, like, amp this up or, you know, whatever. Yeah. Um, whether it be completely fake stories or just, you know, amplified through Twitter bots or whatever operating out of Russia. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure that a lot of the stuff that divides the left that you see online comes from the same sort of farms. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm kind of basing that off of just, like, my supposition of why wouldn't you attack both sides? And if your goal is to make your enemy divided, then you just you hit both halves and make them fight each other. Yeah, I don't think that they needed Russian bots to be able to do that, though. Like, a lot of people live in bubbles. I think one of the problems with the internet is that it forces people to interact in spaces where they're not separated by their nationality or their country of origin or their age group and everything. So you do get these shockingly different views. I think and um, people it makes people really other people that they just haven't really had any kind of experience with people who really believe these sorts of things. And in bad faith, they're kind of like, oh, they create this caricature of like the evil Muslim who oppresses women and likes terrorism and stuff and like meanwhile there's a really complicated set of scenarios that led to this person having the beliefs they do totally and that happens on every avenue online and probably but like you said less to agree in re less to a lesser degree in real life when you actually like see the person and talk to them and like humanize them yeah but I that do too. Think, for example like the the online website that um published that whatever review of that bad date that that girl had with the disease on sorry a couple years oh ago oh god that was apparently owned by a Russian uh, corporation, <laughs> okay. right? So like that got that got amplified, mm -hmm. and their their only reason to see that that really did anything was to have the left eat its own tail, deciding whether or not this was bad, right? Yeah. Not even going to talk about the whole thing, yeah. um, but that that seems to be me at least weak evidence that some of this amplification is on purpose to make people hate yeah. each other. Well, well, I mean, there's it's been proven that some of it is from Russian. Um, well, that's what I'm saying on the right for sure. But, and on the left. Well, that that's all I was saying. Yeah. So yeah. these these. I mean, it's undeniable that some of it is because we literally have proof. Well, I didn't. So I I just oh, had I had okay. a couple of little yeah. anecdotes and some some like I said tinfoil hat conspiracy. Well, I think there was not... an article about a month ago. That, I mean, it this is it's not a secret. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Well, called it. <laughs> it is a regular hat now. It is no longer tinfoil. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> yeah, but I mean. I think that without the trolls, there would still be these kinds of discussions going on. I don't know. Um, right. Well, like... I mean, I know some people um, I've met in real life that literally do this kind of thing. And they're not Russians. They're they're here. Yeah. But I was even thinking or just... are they? <laughs> Sorry. You know, controversy and drama gets pushed, like, disproportionately to the front of news yeah, or to the front of people's button. minds. Yeah. yeah. Like, that, that's kind of what drives Facebook and a lot of social media. I remember also being, like kind of addicted to the drama and the outrage porn for a while again oh, yeah. like the social justice era it was like i was kind of like checking blogs daily and being like what do i have to be upset about today yeah oh man a... look at this terrible thing this person said it's a it's an emotional hit it's and, a, then a you hit go angrily like a, blog like about drug. it yeah yeah i i yeah i, I remember that too and and the, it is kind of like a drug and that's why it keeps getting shared people feel good when they get this emotional outrage they're fighting the good fight right yeah I, I've, I, I still fail at this from time to time, but I try very hard to, uh, if something outrages me, not share it. And like I said, I still fail sometimes because fuck. Well, yeah, humans. but I mean, like, I, I forget what it was, but I saw something recently that you posted on Facebook and some people in your comments feed said, well, actually, this is what happened. And you edited the original post. Right. So 
the fact that I think it's fine to share stuff as long as, you know, you're willing to update later. Be like, oh, actually, like, you know, this turned out to be false or or whatever. more nuanced than I or, thought. Yeah. yeah. I think what it sounds like what you're trying to do, having not since I don't really follow you on Facebook, um, is like if you see something and you have the impulse like this pisses me off so much, people need to be as pissed as I am. You yeah. like check that impulse. Yeah. So that, that sounds I mean, awesome. That's, that's a red flag that I should not share this. That's cool. And again, if it, if something slips through the filter once in a while, I bet it's after some consideration. So sometimes, well, meh. <laughs> it still sounds like you're trying to do. It's like it's like a diet where it's like, yes, I'm I'm good most days. Yeah, yeah. I still it's still commendable. <laughs> right. But most people, when they fail their diets, diets don't you know burn down all of civil society. <laughs> Not that I do that solo, but you know, a hundred thousand matches altogether. Where were we? <laughs> yeah. Um. I had a couple of counter arguments again, kind of where we left off. I don't even know if I want to get into that though. Okay. Um, something I did have was if we wanted to continue talking about why gendered third person pronouns exist and whether they should continue to. Mm. And not even just pronouns. I was thinking about it and we've got he, she, they, uh, we've also got, what do they call them? Honorifics. Yeah. Mr. Mrs. And Doctor. then they've got Ms. and Mix. Yeah. <laughs> or I don't know if you pronounce it Mix, but MX, which is supposed to be the gender neutral one. I think you pronounce it Mix. Hmm. Never heard of that. That's new to me. It's just the one that is, you know, like gender neutral. Right? Yeah. No, I just, yeah. Okay. Cool. Just new to you. Okay, cool. Yeah. I, th I think it's interesting um, being non binary and like interested in how people use the language. I've actually looked some of this stuff up or seen other people talk about it like uh you've got this isn't even english but or latino latina i've seen mm -hmm. some people writing that as latinx as well mm -hmm. uh well, i've seen responses on like whatever twitter feeds or, so, or whatever twitter replies all my stuff from twitter comes from like copy pastes to reddit where people screen cap it <laughs> and someone's like why don't you why don't you like you know white girl in a, at a starbucks like why don't you not tell me how to use my fucking language um apparently they're the the push to oh was it Italian? It well no it was it was a it was a Latina person or a Latino person I'm not uh -huh. sure Latinx. Who, well, <laughs> well the thing is they didn't like they didn't like some white person from from outside the country and outside the language saying here's how your language should work. <laughs> they they thought that it was uh, imperialistic and rude, mm -hmm. um, and maybe condescending. Yeah, and uh, that kind of brings another axis into play there. Yeah, it's tough because. I mean, that, that opens a whole can of worms. I don't know how you treat the rest of the world about doing it. Like, you can't go through and, ge you know, gender neutralize every language that, especially some of the really heavily gendered ones. Like, I know Spanish, yeah. for example, is crazily heavily gendered. Yeah. Spanish has um, genders on, like, inanimate objects. Most, on stuff, yeah. Most of the romantic languages do. Most of the romantic languages have at least the humans gendered, and a lot of them have all objects gendered, too, which is weird. Um, I, I agree entirely that there's absolutely no reason for that to be a thing. Uh, but it has been for thousands of years in certain languages and change is very hard. Well, and also I think there's just this idea of like, all right, cool. So you Americans are now going to step in and tell me like how to use my language is sort of like might be the perceived reaction for some people mm -hmm. and that might not be well received. Right. Yeah. And, I mean, it might be a change worth making, but from the inside by convincing them it's a good idea by not by policing them from the outside, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah, and I like wasn't even. I mean, I'm not surprised if it was something that was invented by white people, but I was under the impression that actual uh, Latino, Latina, Latinx people had come up with this for self-reference. Oh, cool. I mean, at least at least some of them do use it. The uh, the woke among them do. <laughs> Latin <laughs> at least wokes. the online wokes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> woke is now a pronoun. Yep. Uh, yeah. So like referring to groups where they've got ladies and gentlemen and boys and girls. Mm -hmm. uh, I heard somebody say that um, a gender neutral alternative is like friends and guests. Yeah. And then uh, homies. I like to just say comrades. <laughs> or like yeah, homies. homies. That's I liked, a good one. Um, I think that's how I remember Christopher Hitchens opening up a talk like that. And he's like, you know, brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, comrades. And he had one other one or something, but in his delicious British accent. <laughs> but I like to like, throw comrades in there. Yeah. I get the fuckers feeling that works. I would really enjoy that one. Like, <laughs> hey, fuckers! Here's my presentation on the third quarter profits. <laughs> uh, yeah, and then you've got mother, father, sister, brother, aunt, uncle, niece, nephew. Yeah, those are really hard ones because those actually convey important information. Mm. 
I yeah, guess like, it depends I, on how important it is that you know you're you're talking to your aunt or your uncle. See, this this is an interesting thing. I think this came up on the Discord. Is uh, someone relate a quick story about the mother, uh, their mother, and then they realized that they said mother, which is a gendered word, and they said, "I don't know why I didn't just use parent." And I said, I, I replied, "This makes a material difference to me. The that story with the word mother is different than the word parent." And they said, "I feel the same way, but why?" I was actually part of that conversation. That oh, was, you were. That was one of the, that was one of the very few. I'm there live for it. it. Wasn't just reading about it two days later. And it's not because it tells me anything about the parent, because it doesn't. Women vary so much, and you know, men vary so much, and there's tons of overlap. Uh, the information it conveys is about the relationship between the parent and the speaker. People generally have different relationships with their mother than with their father, and uh, I guess that was generally conceded, but also viewed as a unfortunate thing. I think there's also for me the fact that like if I'd said my parent said this because it's not a common way to refer to a parent mm -hmm. you you would think that oh they must have a really troubled relationship or some some un atypical relationship with their with their parents to refer to them as parent rather than mom or dad well and also like the relationship you have with a sibling of the same sex is a different from the relationship you have with a sibling of the opposite sex especially after uh, puberty hits so that also conveys information if you say brother or sister, depending on what your sex is. My brother and I call each other brother and bro a lot. <laughs> and um, like, hey, talk to you later, brother. Um, and I remember Rachel, because she's a single, my wife is a single child. And she's like, I think that's just, she, she expressed at some point like that is so, not that it was weird in a bad way. She was confused by it. And I'm like, it's a lot like how you call your mom, mom and not Laura. Yeah. Like it's a special moniker that only she gets from you. And oh, uh, so like to me calling my brother brother he's the only person i get to call that right unless it's like you know someone else like my bro or something yeah. right well, we don't have that in english but i know in japanese and uh a few other asian languages they have specific words for brother or sister that also refer to the age yeah so you would say like eldest brother or younger <laughs> sister <laughs> all right i'm gonna link i'm gonna reference and then link to this um they have a lot of like social status pronouns yeah. and honorifics there yeah just because you mentioned old, older brother but or they oldest also brother. don't have as many gendered pronouns. Yeah. Um, I found this ridiculous YouTube video that I won't summarize, except for it's, <laughs> it's Nick Offerman narrating what's happening in an Old West saloon, and the people in the saloon can all hear him. And oh, it's, I've seen that. It was amazing. <laughs> and it's like eight minutes long. I'm going to put that in the show notes because it's really funny, and everyone should see it. So, back to the show. Completely unrelated. Yep. Yeah, wait, can I can I um, piggyback a tangent off that? Yeah. Absolutely. As a writer, Inuyash, I'm curious if you narrate in your head while you're like just going about your everyday life. No. Really? Not usually. I have done this for like, I don't know, since I was a little kid and like it, it's especially, it happens especially hard when I'm reading or writing really intensely, but I'll be walking around and being like, and then I walked out the door and I looked left and right and I saw a dog and I was like, that's a good dog. Oh, <laughs> you have that running in your head as yes. you do those things. <laughs> Neat. No, I have not had that. I, I, there was a brief period in my life where I was reading so much that I started to think in terms of the written words. Like I saw parentheses in my head when I went down <laughs> parenthetical. Um, but in general, no, I, I don't, I don't have the self narration like in, what is it? Series of unfortunate events? No. Oh, there's a show. Maybe it is that one huh. that has the narrator that is uh, just the punchline to a lot of things is the narrator saying, no, he didn't. Right oh, after a character's Arrested thing. Development. Is that Arrested Development? They did that a lot. Oh, okay. I'm not, it might not be the only one, but there'd be like, oh, I'll take care of that. And then it would, who was the narrator? It was, um, I'm blanking on it, but he'd be like, he didn't. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. For most people, they just walk around narrating what's not, not narrating in a like you could write this down since, but just like in a word vomit in their head. But this is distinct that yours, your version sounds much more interesting. Yeah. Like you could write it down. Whereas if the rest of us just wrote down what the train of thought that was going through our head. Cause the, we'll look out and we're like, you know, Oh, look over there. Oh, I forgot my keys. I should grab a coat. Like just the yeah. random shit that's in your head all the time. If you just wrote that down, you'd sound insane. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but it's in our head. It's in most of our heads all the time. Right. It's yeah, actually it like, like a president. If you read stuff that's written by amateur writers, it does tend to come off that way. And it's pretty funny. Well, that's that's also just the the insight that especially Sam Harris pushes a lot through just mindful attention that this is the you can you can step behind that sort of um, oh, yeah. that train of thought. You could step out of the way of it and watch it go by 
and not get swept away in it like all day and then have all of your thoughts just kind of be pulling you around all day yeah um yeah you do that in meditation uh you do it in cbt it can be really useful to actually step back and watch what you're doing and realize like it it took me a really long time to realize i was doing negative self-talk all the time Hmm. and i would never want one of my friends to talk to about themselves or like to have someone be talked about the way I was talking about myself. And I realized the double standard of that after a while of observing it and being like, yeah, but well, it motivates me to like, be like, Oh, come on, dumbass, get out of bed, worthless mm-hmm. piece of shit. And like, it's like, haha, it's kind of funny. But like, if you do that all day long, that I was thinking about like, that probably doesn't, like, that's probably not really good for your self-esteem. Yeah. Yeah. That's first of all, awesome that you noticed that. And second, differently awesome that like you noticed it and you're like no i'm i'm gonna stick with it anyway <laughs> and like talk to yourself and how good of an idea it was well that's how i've come to change my mind about a lot of things that, uh, that's awesome yeah it's you, it's a gradual process do you still do that it's in like isn't that one of the points of cbt to stop yeah. doing that? yeah yeah no i still do it i mean it's oh. a lifelong habit but i'm much better now at catching it when it's happening cool or Sometimes I'll say stuff out loud and then kind of have to walk back and be like, oh, wait, I just I realized I just did that thing. And actually, uh, I'm going to rephrase that. <laughs> I've heard it said as if you were a character in a fantasy novel and this thing was whispering these things to you, the reader would obviously go, that's the evil sword right. you're holding. <laughs> <laughs> Throw it in fire. I like that. I saw this summarized in a tweet on Reddit that was like, therapist you know you should stop thinking about yourself in such harsh terms me in my head yeah you dumb bitch stop thinking about yourself that way (laughs) i saw that i was like relatable Mm -hmm. uh all right so we got off topic again yes we were talking about pronouns and things that are not pronouns but are gendered so what is the point of these i mean like i think we kind of got pretty close to it when we were talking about the familial gendered words such as aunt or uncle Mm -hmm. that does actually help differentiate who you're talking about maybe even more so in chinese if you were saying eldest brother like you know who that is why not use their name um why use any pronouns at all i guess maybe i i these are if if you're posing it to me like a real question i can think of like quick answers one of which might be like you use a uh, you know um it could be like a more formal thing to call somebody by their name like hey bud is way more like friendly or even hey bro or hey sis is more congenial than Mm -hmm. like you know calling them by addressing them by their formality Mm -hmm. um well there's different ways you can say someone's name too there totally is a lot of like conversational guides will tell you use people's names that actually establishes intimacy i know why i use them i find it computationally expensive to constantly reference people's names like, I don't think of people by their names. I think of them as, like, the physical object I see and the feelings I have for them <laughs> and, like, our relationship and stuff. So, like, calling So they're kind of a sub-person? <laughs> no, no, well, not, not a sub-person. It's, like, it's an entire, like, entity in my head, but the name is not part of that entity. There's, there's the feelings and the history we have and all this, but uh, I have to, like, specifically call up a name, and it's, I fail sometimes, even with people I've known for a long time. Um... My, my mother once went through the all of my siblings and the dog before finally getting to my name and trying <laughs> to get a, my attention. It's funny how often uh, I, we were actually just talking about that at work, where like if you have a bunch of kids, the parent will be like, Joseph, Christine, Greg, whoever the hell you are, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, get in here. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, I'm terrible with names. I don't know exactly why that is. I have my suspicions, but uh, I, I... And so like calling up someone's name to me does cost... Um, brain cycles and it can be derailing and so i find pronouns much easier they're just like boom there they're there and if i actually have to pull up someone's name it takes a little bit more time usually it doesn't take that much time because like steven you're steven i know that steven but uh <laughs> but if you keep calling me that i'll think i've done something wrong <laughs> right. yeah well but every now and then it's just you know faster saves me that millisecond or whatever yeah that, kind of the thing with the intimacy too is like when you're saying referring to someone by name every time it can I think promote that feeling of intimacy or like, oh, they, they remember my name, they care about me. But then also, yeah, you do like, if you refer to someone by their entire name. Whenever yeah, you, you were it, in trouble. You're in trouble. Yeah. yeah. Well, with, because, your, with your parents, if they'd say your full name, you're definitely in trouble. Because now, I don't even know how long it was, 20 years ago, that book came out that was like, hey, you know, if you want to make friends, if you want to influence people, use their names. Cause Del people Carnegie. Like, 
I don't know if that was the actual book it was, but it's, yeah, that's uh, how to make when friends and influence if you, people. If you want to get more intimate with someone, you use their name because people like hearing their names. And so all salespeople use people's names now. And at this point, when someone uses my name, you know, associate it with marketing. Yes, I, I am instantly suspicious of them. And like, even when my friend uses my name, I'm like, okay, you get that one today. <laughs> <laughs> but but use my name a lot more, and I start getting suspicious. What are you trying to pull over on? You? <laughs> right, exactly, yeah. man. Yeah, I do remember there was this kid that uh, I was friends with in high school, but it took a while because this kid would come and sit next to me and be like, hey, Jessica, how are you doing today? Like, how was your day? And I was just like, what the hell are you doing? It was just such <laughs> bizarre behavior for like someone that grew up in New Jersey. But then like, it took me a while where I was like, oh, he's not some creeper. He's just like actually like being friendly. What is this? Hmm. Weird. <laughs> and then it was nice after I realized that like outside of the creepy bubble of new jersey that like sometimes people are just nice and friendly and go out of their way to like be nice (laughs) because it's nice to be nice who would have thought i think invoking someone's true name a lot during like a conversation with them like that's in chapter one of every like neuro-linguistic programming book (laughs) that's in if it's not in carnegie's how to win friends and influence people it might be in influence science and practice and that's Um, that's exactly why i don't trust people who do that now yeah they they obviously want something from me it's funny. Anyways, we have about a half hour left on this topic. <laughs> yeah, let's... Um... I mean, we can cut it shorter if we have less to talk about, but we don't want to go nah. too over. I'm trying to actually just think of how to segue to the... The science part? The science part. How about we just We're go to the We're segueing to the part? science part. All right, let's hear about some science. All right. Uh, yeah, so we were starting with, like, how you define gender versus sex. And nowadays, the TLDR is sex is anatomy and gender is psychology. Can I... Ask about that real quick. Sure. My impression was that nowadays sex was about um, anatomy and gender was about social role. Is that not the case or is this a newer development or what's exactly going on here? I've heard it referred to both ways. And I think, um, hmm. Yeah, I think that maybe, I'm not positive. Maybe originally they started saying like social role when it was, I think, started to, it, it probably started being questioned by the feminist movement who weren't even thinking in terms of being transgender, gender identity being a thing at that point. It was just, let's, you know, break down the usage of these words. Why do we need these gendered pronouns? Well, it's so you know who to treat differently. And like, oh, that's kind of fucked up. But, uh... And this is the one time every two years my psychology degree comes in handy. Um, I think I did taught us both, like in books, okay. um, throughout my years of doing that stuff. I would see both definitions for gender. It was always the same for sex. It was always plumbing or, you know, anatomy. And then, <laughs> it's um, more than that, but. Well, yeah. but that, yes. But as like, as far as the, you know, quick definitions, if you're going to go yeah. for, you know, sex is plumbing slash anatomy. Um, I like, it was never plumbing in the books. I like calling it plumbing. <laughs> um, and then gender was always either social role or psychology. Okay. So I think the answer is yes. Hmm. All right. It almost feels like we need three words now because those are pretty different things. Yeah. I mean, you can be a cis girl and completely reject the social role of being a woman and i think that that should be an acceptable identity i mean i think i just don't have an identity i've looked within i've done drugs (laughs) to look within there's just no one home (laughs) i might be i might be i might be a pee zombie huh but yeah you are a meat popsicle (laughs) (laughs) well i feel like we should get into that another time because that's super interesting (laughs) let's table that uh Yeah. In general terms, I pulled this quote from somewhere. Uh, Medical News Today says, in general terms, sex refers to the biological differences between males and females, such as the genitalia and genetic differences. Gender is more difficult to define, but it can refer to the role of a male or female in society known as a gender role or an individual's concept of themselves or gender identity. Yeah, that's confusing. Um, I'll link to this... Well, it just it means more than one thing, which is, I guess, yeah, it's, it's easy to understand. It's confusing in practice. The point of words, which like is funny because it's kind of the crux of some of the arguments about the non-binary pronouns and inventing new pronouns. But the point of having words and vocabulary is to be able to distinguish between ideas. Yeah, and having that one word mean two distinct things is awkward. Yeah, that can obfuscate what you're trying to talk about. Yeah. Um. And yeah, I was going to link to, and I still will, there was this good breakdown slash diagram from, what is it? Gendersanity.com. <laughs> I will still link to it, but uh, 
and we're gonna get to user uh yeah listener feedback but a listener actually like made a much better no. <laughs> essay well, and a bunch of diagrams <laughs> well no we can link to both but uh yeah put put the listener one up top yeah so like if you're having trouble trying to visualize this or if you're a visual person or i don't know so you, shout you out just to like wealth who sent this in uh on patreon and i think they put it on the discord server too okay um or somebody did because that was comic sans wasn't it no that's um the font from the, the oatmeal? xkcd or no it's the oatmeal okay no, never mind somebody oh or, you know at the very least it's not xkcd it was a it no, was they've a got it it's a unless it's possibly the what if no it's XKCD. it's the font in the diagrams is xkcd okay, and then so the main that. body text is this font called playtime oh, with hot toddies in the, uh, <laughs> in the diagram okay yeah yeah i was thinking of the uh the main text font and i was thinking of somebody else who posted an article for review on the discord and someone's like first feedback don't use comic sans mm-hmm. um but yeah, Welf wrote their blog post in a um, not Arial or Times New Roman font, which looked fine, but it was yeah. distinct. In general, I don't care. You know, you can interesting fonts are fun and interesting. Every now and then, like my sister will send an email in Comic Sans, and I'm like, it's really hard to take your email seriously. <laughs> Please tell me you don't email your clients in Comic Sans. Yeah, I'm not a font Nazi, but I'm told that that and Papyrus are like the worst. So. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why Papyrus. Because Papyrus doesn't look. I think silly, it's in my one opinion. of the like they they had an original set of fonts that came with early computers, and the ones that looked distinct and interesting were Comic Sans and Papyrus, and I, okay. there's like a couple of others. Um, and now they're just kind of thought of as like, I don't know, outdated and stupid. There was that SNL sketch where Ryan Gosling's losing his shit because the Avatar poster was in co- <laughs> Papyrus. <laughs> 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 That'll be my other comic relief for the show notes. Yeah, that, I actually do find that really funny. But um, I actually, I like the use of the handwritten font here because it matches the handwritten style of the graphs and and they used a sub font for the diagram text. As a graphics designer, I find this pleasing. Cool. Right, so the diagram I was going to link to just shows that spectrum between biological sex, uh, male intersex or female, gender identity, being men, gender queer or woman... <laughs> Gender expression, so masculine, androgynous, and feminine, and sexual orientation, so attracted to women, bi, asexual, attracted to men. And those are all the spectrums that you can kind of fluctuate between. And yeah, getting into what the differences are between the sexes. I lost the attribution for this one, I'll find it. But uh, (laughs) if someone said there's not a single biological sex marker found exclusively in male bodies or female bodies. So that's where I just wanted to get into how much... Well, on one hand, um, differentiating male and female is really simple, and then, and then it's not. <laughs> Stephen looked like he was about to say. Well, I, 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 I think that's one of those things that's like technically true, but uh, in print, in practice, is uh, like uselessly true. Mm. Um, like, well, how how was it phrased? There's no one thing, genetic marker or something. There's not a single biological sex marker. Right. So, like. That sounds, yeah, I'm, that's technically true because there's like edge cases, but it is one of those things where it's like, it's true so often that I'd bet you a thousand dollars in any like average case. Mm-hmm. Um, like I made the, I had somebody, I think I mentioned this in the last episode. I can't remember. I talked to somebody once who had said, there's no differences between men and women. <laughs> and I was like, if I went in for stomach pain to the doctor and they charged me $400 to, uh, like an ultrasound of my ovaries, I'd be pissed and I wouldn't pay it. Right. Yeah. Like if, if you went in for, you know, whatever issue and they, or if I, if I got charged for pregnancy test or something like th- those are the things like there are, there are differences that if I was a doctor and some patient comes in and presents a stomach pain, whether or not they're a man or woman, excuse me, whether or not they appear to be a man or woman um, and they check whatever box on the sheet, if they check female, then I'm not going to check for testicular cancer. Right. And I should probably get a big slap on the wrist if I charge them for a <laughs> testicular cancer test. Well, I think um, in those cases, it is the responsibility of the person being treated to disclose. I mean, if they care about getting the correct medical treatment. Totally. I've also heard that argument. So, like, I kind of was gritting my teeth when you started saying that. And then I realized you were saying a totally different thing. But a bunch of other people who are anti-trans or whatever have made the argument that, like, oh, man, what if you got rushed in for emergency medical care? And then they, like did the wrong procedure on you because you look like the other gen. It's just like, yeah, okay. <laughs> you can invent whatever like wacky scenario you want, but. Right. 
happily I wasn't going there. But and I mean, if it's a medical procedure dealing with those parts, they'd probably discover pretty damn quick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I, I'm not sure how thorough surgeries look, but I bet a doctor could... No, I'm, <laughs> they I'm serious. take your clothes off right. before they cut into you. Well, and, and I'm not sure how, how thorough a gender reassignment surgery looks, if it's oh, really right. well done or something, but I'm betting a doctor could tell. Mm. Maybe. Maybe huh. not. I don't know. It's There's some that I think are good enough. You would probably need a chromosome test. Awesome. And then. even then, chromosomes... So, like, I... Even yeah, then there's, yeah, flukes. And I would say, like, not the way that that's phrased, that there's not a single bio biological sex marker you're found exclusively in male and female bodies it's not saying that that's the norm either but it's just a uh, the kind of yes generally you can probably be comfortable in 98 percent of cases i think the weird part is, is that the way it's phrased it makes it sound like well you can't look at someone's genes and know anything when in fact you almost always can mm, well i'll like get into the, genes yeah what's the complete androgen in, insensitivity thing is that yeah what it's called yep yeah i mean that's case uh, the acronym CAIS. Right. And if you looked at someone's genes, you would get the wrong information from that. Uh, but it's fairly rare. And generally, when you're confused, that kind of gene check will work. Like just giving someone the impression that they can't get in any information by looking at someone's uh, genetic information is wrong because you usually can. Yeah. I mean, you can get a lot of information, but you do actually have to look at those things. And I think that the point is that it's not necessarily good practice to assign any one biological marker as this is a definite sign that this person is oh. biologically this because yes. you can change hormones and you can change everything. Yeah. Um, yeah. At that point, well, if you're trying bones. to like reduce it just to one thing anyway, it starts to feel like you have an agenda. Like why are you <laughs> trying to reduce someone to just this one thing? Well, kind of weirdly enough, I was just reminded of people trying to figure out when a fetus becomes sentient. I, I guess I was thinking of it because I keep seeing those horrible billboards that mm -hmm. has a picture of a fucking nine-month-old baby yeah. <laughs> being all adorable and wearing a onesie and making eye contact and yeah. all photoshopped to be photogenic. Mm -hmm. It's always a white baby. <laughs> it's always a white baby. Anyway, Ben, it's like, oh, I have a heartbeat after this many weeks or I can feel pain starting at this stage. And I'm like, show a picture of what they look like at that stage, fuckers. Yeah. You look like a brainstem with like translucent gelatinous skin. Yeah. The size of, like, a single cell. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't care. I'm not sure what age, like, human fetuses start to look like humans, but my sister... It takes a while. It does. I'm not sure. Let me see. I bet it says in here. I'm scrolling through uh, texts from my sister. They don't even look that human when they're first born. Babies are... No, they're weird. I did see my like, niece when she was first born. She I looked kind of kinda like Voldemort from the, like, <laughs> yeah. the seventh Harry Potter book. I was just going to say a lot of mythological monsters are based on fetuses because we as a species find fetuses to be grotesque yeah. like if you think of the gray aliens they're just big fetuses yeah if you think of a lot of like horror movie monsters that have that kind of like baldness and the like big eyes and kind of melted look i guess like yeah like attack on titan has the <laughs> the big baby creepy things so all i know about fetal development is that this is what a baby looks like at 12 weeks yep um so that seems looks vaguely human shaped. So Steven show I guess a picture of an ultrasound. Oh, what will be my uh, next niece? I won ten dollars actually because it's a niece, not a nephew. So it is, or, you you're know. betting on the gender. Well, we, my sister, they were betting on the sex. That's uh -huh. right. <laughs> 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 um, yeah, we were. I threw this out because for whatever reason, someone was like, "I bet it's a boy," and I was like, "I'll take that action." <laughs> so, yeah, it is. Yeah. It does have a vaguely human outline at that point, but I bet if it was pulled out and looked at, it would be not very human looking. Yeah, she said, I think, in here how big it was at this size, too. Or, yeah, in those pictures. Oh, you know, she doesn't. Who cares? It's like the size of your thumb or something, right? Yeah. yeah. Size of a peanut, maybe. Weird. <laughs> and it looks like the head is about a third of the, yeah. or more of the total <laughs> it's body like mass. It's like Tweety Bird. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yo, anyway, where was I? Yeah, so we've got chromosomes. Human embryos start out looking phenotypically female. And I hear this a lot. People say that everybody starts life as a girl. That's not actually correct. They have the male and female reproductive tracts. So that's the Wolfian duct and the Malarian duct. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing those correctly, but those become the vagina or the penis. Wait, what happens to the other one? Does it shrivel away? Um, men and women have the same organs. They're just acted yeah. on by hormones so they either protrude or don't but they just so morph into the thing or the other thing it's not like two things it's like one thing that could turn into the one or the other uh more or less okay and why the tracts have different names um i mean they are different 
tracts, but uh, I should have paid more attention in school. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I believe you know what actually the like that would be either the ovaries or the testicles are the same thing, right? Yeah, they that's just the gonads or gonads. Yeah, I have that a really bad case of readers vocabulary or whatever they call it. Oh, where you don't there's so many words, pass. yeah, that yeah. I've only ever seen written. Anyway, and then, yeah, the uh, the penis, the clitoris becomes is what the head of the penis would have been, and then the shaft goes deeper into the body. Yep, it's really interesting. Ooh, can good I... stuff to know if you're going to make love to a woman. Good thing to know if you're trans. Uh, there's a, another tangent, but I just find this really entertaining. There's a surgery um, that's an alternative to phalloplasty, which is where they take the skin of your arm or leg or your side and use it to construct a penis. Huh. But um, there's another thing called metoidioplasty, where they actually just release the clitoris from the clitoral hood, um, take the skin that was the labia majora like the, the inside of it and wrap it around to make a shaft and then you can just take the like fatty de- deposits that are the i guess like pubis and insert uh these little implants to make like a, a scrotum <laughs> so you can just take the organ and make it into the other organ <laughs> what about like erectile tissue or is there some kind of implant that can become flaccid or well yeah that's firm? that's the thing that's fun about it uh or like maybe not fun but uh, <laughs> You have to choose between one or the other if you want to get, like, bottom surgery uh, as an FTM at this stage of our medical knowledge and know-how. So if you get phalloplasty, it cannot become erect because that's the one where they take skin from somewhere else. Mm. So you have to insert this, like, basically a balloon that you inflate. (laughs) And sometimes one of the testes is the thing that you use to pump it out. On the plus side, you can get hard on command and just stay that way. On the downside, maybe ow. <laughs> am I am I the only one hearing about like all the the surgery that area? I'm thinking like, ouch. Well, I'm assuming once it heals up, it'd be okay. Totally, but yeah. until it heals up, it probably oh, feels well, like someone's taking a hot poker to your genitals. Yeah, but that's every surgery. It's a no, that's a, that's a really intense procedure, and I mean, like when I say they take a skin graft of the arm, like your arm from your wrist up to like the elbow is just like huh. the skin is gone Ooh. and so it takes a while hung. to grow back yeah, and yeah, yeah. You, Sorry, you usually have yeah I, I guess like that, that was the other thing that like is funny i don't know like i've known a couple of people that have gone through this surgery and they were like so my doctor's like how big do you want it to be and i'm like uh <laughs> <laughs> like just keep in mind that however big you want it to be we're gonna have to take that much skin mm. uh <laughs> yeah that's such a trade-off yeah. <laughs> I mean, I I guess I don't want to be able to wear pants. I'll stick with a kilt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then like the meta surgery though, since you're just using the clitoral tissue, then that actually can get erect, but you can't make it very big because mm. the clitoris is as big as it's going to get on testosterone, which like kind of goes from like a few centimeters to a few inches. Really? Yeah, oh, like wow. it, it varies. Even, even like after puberty, it can get yeah. that much bigger. Okay. Um. Yeah, that's one of the effects that testosterone has. Um, FTM. Uh, is testosterone like we talked about? It, didn't we talk about it before? It's like basically going through puberty again. Yeah, there's some things that can't change anymore. Uh, your bones, they get done growing, and then the growth plates fuse. There's a trick to get around that, that everyone is really horrified when I talk about. Uh, I like, I don't know, I like biohacking and medical stuff. So just like, hey, there's a surgery where you can actually like grow your arms and legs by breaking the bones and stretching them out and then letting the osseous tissue just grow back in. Yeah. Easy there, bone saw. <laughs> <laughs> uh, That's yeah. an inside reference to Worm and Ward fans. Uh, what a good character. I right. that power. I thought would be such a cool power if used for good. She's like a bio tinker and mm-hmm. like tinkers like make tech or something. Mm-hmm. It, it's kind of vague. And she makes tech uh, too. She does, but, it, but it's specifically, yeah, biology stuff. So like she, cool. she just, you know, she wants, she can just hack two things, two people together to give them, you know, weird new shit. Okay. And she's a villain. So she goes kind of balls to the wall with it in way worse ways than you're imagining. Awesome. Yeah. So much worse. Thanks, Wild Bo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So enough talking about uh, creepy surgeries that I think are fascinating. Let's see. Yeah, we were talking about ducts. Uh, The first five to six weeks of embryonic development are attributed to the X chromosome alone, which is why men have nipples. And females grow from an embryo to fully developed through the influence of only the X chromosome. Do you want to hear... I'm sorry, I'm going to take us on a tangent. (laughs) It's about time it's someone other than me. Uh, Do you want to hear about the craziest creationist thing I've ever heard? Does it have to do with the rib? With what? Oh, I don't know. I just assumed that it was about, like, why, like men and women having different numbers of ribs uh no although 
interestingly, I thought they had different numbers of ribs until I was in my teens. I did too. I was you yeah. know, raised Catholic and everybody just said that as though it were like a fact. You would think that this being the 21st century, people would like have realized that that is not true. Yeah. Many of us have seen a chest x-ray of ourselves. But, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you can feel your own ribs as long as you aren't too obese and count them out. Yeah. <laughs> the, uh, all right. I'll anyway, count, what I'll was... count somebody else's later. All right. Okay. So uh, this, it was, this was actually a creationist that is... Um, well-ish known he had uh like appeared on some christian radio shows he had a talk circuit i want to say ray comfort but i'm not sure maybe mm. it wasn't him uh the banana man yeah the banana that's man. what i call him too i love it <laughs> but uh at some point someone asked him why do men have nipples the answer he came back with it was well you have all sorts of different skin on your body like your finger the okay. skin on your fingers is different from the skin on your back and which is that's different from the skin on your lips and right. the skin of your eyelids I'm following so far and like how how does the skin meet up somewhere all the skin has to like turn into other skin <laughs> so that is what the nipples are where, where the skins all touch and become a different skin that's like that's like the the zipper where it's all tied that's the end of the bag that when you tie it shut and i'm like do does Ray? Does he have some kind of weird skin line that goes from his lips <laughs> down to his nipples? Like, what the fuck? Uh, it's funny because that's almost not wrong. I mean, the nipples, that has nothing to do with that. But <laughs> yes. there are these, like, uh, lines throughout our body that are divided by various genes. That's, like, why you can get a calico cat. Oh, yeah. Or you, you can actually get a genandromorph. What is that? That's where uh, a organism is split left half to right half uh one side being male one side being female really yeah if you look, google dinandromorphic animals you can find some really cool like half hen half rooster uh oh. a lobster that's blue on one half and black on the other half some really cool insects that's really cool yeah, yeah. the human body's not split up like that our um pieces are all scattered but that's one of the things i was going to bring up in the abnormal cases we can have chimerism so mm -hmm. you can have a human that's got uh one testy and one ovary I like the pictures of cats where like their face right down the middle like is like orange and striped on one side and like solidly gray on the other. Yeah. Those are kind of cute. Yeah, and that that has to do with that um chimerism. Uh let's see. All right, so around the second month, <laughs> the fetal testes start producing enough androgens to offset the maternal estrogens and that causes masculinization. In normal cases, quote unquote, humans inherit 23 chromosomes from their parents. One pair of chromosomes helps determine the baby's sex. Uh Simplistically, two X chromosomes equals female, and an X from the mother and a Y from the father equals male. There's... Y makes you a guy. That's how I remembered that. <laughs> the... Which, yeah, gender stuff aside. Right. <laughs> that's how you check it on a multiple choice test to remember which chromosome does what. I won't hold mnemonics against anyone. I've actually heard that if you come up with intentionally the like, funniest, most bizarre, like meanest mnemonic you're more likely to remember it so i use those when i'm trying to remember people's names sometimes I have some pretty mean ones that's fantastic <laughs> you have to share some of those later uh i don't know if i do <laughs> you don't have to i would love it if you did i'll have to see if i can remember i don't some. want to know what mine is i desperately no, want to your, know what mine is your name is very memorable oh okay uh and i didn't have one for you fuck <laughs> I feel less special Aww. so yeah at the end of your uh y chromosome there's an sry gene which is uh the gene that helps send the embryo down the masculine pathway. Uh, you need more than that SRY for sex determination and differentiation. Uh, so we were talking about the women with CASE. I don't know if anyone actually pronounces the acronym in that way, but that's the androgen sensitivity. Mm. They have the SRY gene, but they lack androgen receptors. So in terms of hormone effects on their bodies, which includes the brain, uh, women with CASE have much less masculinization than the average <laughs> 46 uh, XX women because their cells don't respond to androgens. What's so, 46 XX? Um, just like, I guess, uh, oh, cisgender like women. Oh, three chromosomes yeah. to each XX being the, okay. That, that being the, like, you know, normal woman. Gotcha. <laughs> so, yeah, case women are actually more quote-unquote feminine. <laughs> Even though they have the XY. Yep. Okay. Although something that is interesting is I have heard that case women tend to be overrepresented in, like, science and engineering and mathematics. So I don't know what the, is going on there. Hmm. Uh, I'm not sure that's true either. That's just hearsay. That'd be interesting. Yeah, I'd like to look that up. Uh, yeah, li living organisms have a variety of sex determination chromosomes. So we've got XY. There's other species that have XO, Z, W, Z, 0. 
haplodiploidy, I probably pronounced that terribly, uh, temperature dependent. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's a fun one. Uh, meanwhile, many other organisms have only one sex or hermaphroditic or change sex at a certain life phase or as needed. <laughs> Dude, that'd be pretty sweet if we had the temperature dependent <laughs> sex. Yeah. Like, eh, today I want to be a girl. Just got to get down to uh, fifty degrees. No, it changes like the, the the gestational temperature will determine whether you oh, have male or female offspring. Okay. But it doesn't unfortunately happen throughout the rest of your life. Well, that's a bummer. I'm but, no longer as impressed by biology. Well, no, but then they've got the ones that do just change sex either because there's not enough of one uh, sex in like your school of fish, or just because hey, what the hell? I'll Famously, <laughs> the dinosaurs in Jurassic Park. <laughs> Yeah, which, you know, they had frog DNA. I guess frogs also do that. Yeah. And which doesn't I, make any goddamn sense. <laughs> I remember reading in one of Dan Dennett's books, he was complaining about that because, like, that was why they had the frog DNA. Yeah. And he was like, we're more closely related to dinosaurs than frogs are. <laughs> or, excuse me, than, yeah. So, yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. It's just that. Oh, because they're amphibians. Mm. Well, no, but they're reptiles. No, dinosaurs guess, are birds. Right. I guess birds split off less distantly than amphibians then. According to Dennett. Okay. I'll, I'll take his word he, for he'd it. He'd know. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so... But they both are kind of like lizardy looking to exactly. the human eye in the 90s. So they're and, and obviously I think, related. And I think the sex swapping thing was something that they wanted to incorporate into yeah, the plot. I mean, so. they needed it for the story. Well, yeah. I mean, somehow life would have uh, found a way. Yeah. <laughs> no, as a dinosaur fanatic, I have to... Even though I know we're running late. Oh, they're high-fiving. It's adorable. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Okay, dinosaurs, like, the reason that we think of them as being lizardy looking is because we found some bones and people just kind of, like, shrink-wrapped them with scaly skin and were like, yeah, I think it looks like an iguana. Mm -hmm. But, like, there's more accurate... I mean, they, they found whole preserved dinosaurs in amber and... That's the thing that really annoyed me about Jurassic World. Because Jurassic Park, they went through, like, pains. Oh, yeah, Steel no, that Bell, was QB. really up to date. Yeah, at the, like, as... for, at the information they had at the time, that was really accurate. They even, yeah. you know, said that, like, some di some scientists think that dinosaurs might have had feathers. Right. I mean, <laughs> in that movie. That was the cutting edge at the time. And then by the time Jurassic World came out, we knew that dinosaurs basically had feathers. At least most of them. Yeah, well, Jurassic World was garbage for yeah, a lot of but, reasons. But they didn't <laughs> update anything. They're like, yeah, let's use the science that's 25 years old to to make this dinosaur. Didn't they even call it out in the movie? Like they were like, "Oh, how come the dinosaurs don't have feathers?" And like one of the scientists was like, oh, "Well, we realize that people like it better this way, or something." Or this is the I don't know. Oh, oh maybe they I'm not did. sure if they did or not. But... I didn't actually see the movie because oh, I, I saw it. Was it. Uh, if they did hand wave it, which I don't remember if they did, then then that actually totally excuses it for me. Yeah. As long as they acknowledge it and be like, "You know what? We know we're doing this. Fuck you guys." Then like then I'm all for it. I'm still slightly annoyed. Yeah, but okay. but less annoyed than if they had just like gotten it wrong or didn't care yeah. or they thought we were too dumb. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, I want to link to a picture of my favorite dinosaur, Theritsinosaurus, because I had this toy of it as a kid, and it looked like this fucking badass thing with like these long claws and this like cool lizardy snake head. And then now, like more recent drawings of it just show it as this big floofy sloth looking thing <laughs> with like big poof of feathers it looks like a kiwi and i love it i saw a picture of what uh whales would look like if we just found their bones and tried to just wrap them with some flesh oh my god <laughs> i need to see this link to that too okay all right oh man this is such a tangenty episode that. i gotcha okay uh right so uh let's see female yeah so xy uh is what we use and most other mammals also use this, as well as some insects, some snakes, and some plants, notably ginkgo, which is really old. Ginkgo's been around since the dinosaurs. Uh, in this system, the sex of the individual is determined by the sex chromosomes. Uh, the females typically have two of the same kind of sex uh, chromosome, the XX, and are the homogametic sex. <laughs> and males typically have two, which are the XY, and they're called the heterogametic sex. And then there's the other less common sex determining karyotypes, which are XXY, XXXY, XXXXY, <laughs> XX, yeah, four X is Y, um, XYY, XXX, and X. <laughs> uh, all of these develop differently from the XY and the XX karyotypes. Uh, missing or having an extra chromosome affects height, bone structure, your arm and leg length, the size and shape of your hands and feet your muscle and fat distribution, your motor skills, your fertility, your secondary sex characteristics, facial structure, and temperament. Although there's some controversy over that one. Particularly, um, there's actually this myth that XYY increases aggression and criminality. You've probably heard that one. Um, I hadn't heard that one specifically. Oh, 
yeah, there's this like it's the hyper male, the X Y Y. Huh. They're overrepresented in prison, and then like actually, um, statistical analysis shows that that's not true. They're oh. actually much less likely to be. I mean, oh, what it was is if you separate for uh, like poverty. Okay. Um, if you take out like extraneous factors and. That's interesting. Our control for that then actually it shows that X Y Ys are less likely to be criminal than the normal X Y male. Does that mean that there's a disproportionate amount of X Y Y people in poverty or below the poverty line in America? Probably. Weird. I wonder what caused that. Um. I mean. I mean, could it just been you know random um, genetic drift? Do they have the polite way of saying full cognitive capacities if you're X Y Y? No, like... that is um one of the oh. karyotypes that's associated with um mentation difficulty so that oh, that, that, that sort of explains the yeah. poverty thing they yeah. tend to be more i think um on the add spectrum side of things uh more impulsive um yeah the, the things associated with that okay um some learning disabilities yeah there's i was actually just going to say that the different karyotypes can affect your iq in interesting ways so you might see differences in executive function spatial reasoning speech or language but not in all the ways that you'd expect so for example, uh, people with a single X chromosome uh, are shorter, and but like triple X chromosomes are taller than average, but both are generally assigned female. So you would associate normally like, okay, the X gene is going to be associated with things like that are associated with femininity, and generally we tend to think of shorter height, but not always the case. And the prevalence uh, that XXY or that's Klinefelter syndrome is actually fairly common. Researchers estimate about 1 in 500 would-be XY people are born with an extra X. And then on the other hand, the 4XY <laughs> is really rare, and that only appears in about one of every 1,000 births. Does XXY have any impact on um, anything, or do you really have to just get a genetic test to notice? Um, it can. It's associated with some motor skill uh, difficulties and I think some kind of more autistic spectrum uh Mentation difficulty, but I think often it does go undiagnosed. That one is, uh, yeah, depending on how many more copies of one of the chromosomes you have, it can be more debilitating. I think that, um, yeah, XXY or triple X or XYY, they tend to be like pretty normal, or at least like n not as uh, problematic. Isn't isn't normal uh, ableist? Should yeah, you probably say, should you say like, average? You can actually hear me probably struggling with the word, but I'm just trying to think of. I'm giving you a hard time. Yeah, I another house reference from the TV show. Oh, <laughs> I actually haven't seen House. I feel like I should watch it. You might love it. I probably would. If you like medicine stuff, that I do. they had like medical people on st on staff to help make the stuff as out there as possible while still being pl hmm. possible, and it's exactly an allegory it's it's i could go on for two minutes as to why it's sherlock holmes in a hospital but that's that's what it is <laughs> yeah no I, i'm familiar with it um the premise I, I probably would enjoy it i just don't really watch tv that much i did try to watch Grey's anatomy though and i found it to be like kind of neat and then also just not nearly enough like cool medical shit going on and way too much fucking who's sleeping who with who and well i mean that's what it is it's yeah. a relationship drama that just happens to be in a hospital Wait, yeah. which one? Grey's Anatomy? Yeah, I never watched that. I was watching Scrubs in house, and I was all... I remember at the time, I was like, yep, yeah, I think I'm all maxed out in my medical-based uh, <laughs> well, I mean, TV is, shows. You know, basically, just the other coin of that, it's ba it's a friend sitcom that happens to be in a hospital. Right, exactly. But it was a it was a sitcom, and then there was my detective show for, okay. med for medical stuff, and I didn't need a third one. Right, so. right. Only so much medicine you can take in for, your entertainment. For what, it's, for what it's worth, <laughs> I'm told that Scrubs is the most accurate of working in a hospital. Oh, okay. for, for better or worse. Yeah. If you ask people in hospitals, what's the most accurate show of those three? People said Scrubs. Cool. Yeah. I think it's weird that I actually feel like I could just go home from working eight, nine hours at a hospital and then just probably watch Scrubs or something like that and still be fine with it. I remember uh, not wanting to like play video games when I was working in the video games industry because I was just like, oh, I've been dealing with that all day. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. I read a book. Uh, maybe it's just that I care more about medicine than video games or... Maybe it just hasn't burned me out yet. Anyway. It's it's different. I mean, it's kind of like I'm not a front-end developer, but if I, I, I've i done some and then you're sitting there staring at clunky UIs and just being really pissed because <laughs> you know what the fuck's wrong with it. Yeah. So, yeah, I can imagine being a game developer might actually take some of the fun out of game develop or game playing. Yeah. All right. Um, And then, yeah, I mentioned mosaic genetics where 
some of a person's cells will have the XX chromosomes and some of them will have the XY. It's so weird. Uh, intersexual chimerism is what that's called. Um, or no, that's actually something different. <laughs> intersexual chimerism, it might be the same thing, but this is particularly when it's uh, two embryos that have their own unique DNA fused together and develop as a single fetus, which results in an individual with two sets of DNA in a single body. And that's where you can actually get like the person who has one ovary and one testicle. <laughs> uh, all right, we are running low on time. I'm going to speed through some of this. Or from that episode of Full Metal Alchemist. What's up? Did you watch Full Metal Alchemist? I, no. Yeah, I did. I remember when he, the chimera. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's a very gut-wrenching moment. He ba- without, well, is it spoiling if it's been I'm outrageous? Never gonna see it. If you're never going to see it. I, I, but like maybe. It'll, it'll ruin some shock value. There's there's chimera stuff in Full Metal Alchemist that is uh, intense. So have fun. Okay. Yeah, okay. That, that, that's good enough without spoiling things. All right. Uh, all right, let me speed through some more of this. Yeah, so I was just talking about your chromosomes and all the different formations you can have. Another sex determinant is your hormones. So that's your fetal and your endogenous hormones. Endogenous meaning? Or the, I was going to define them, but... Uh, oh, thank you. <laughs> fetal being uh, theorized to be what causes your like transgender orientation and stuff. Okay. Because being uh, exposed to more fetal testosterone or more fetal uh estrogen can affect you developing one way or the other regardless of how like your body has decided to configure itself to some extent but um yeah fetal is just what is flowing through your mom's womb while you're in there (laughs) Um, and endogenous are like the hormones that your body creates Hmm. and there's you know estrogen and testosterone but those are there's several of them there's estradiol and progesterone and a few different ones that do different stuff. Uh, morphology, we know that one. Uh, height being the archetypal example, where you've got kind of the two intersecting uh, U curves. So. So uh, what is that this that we're defining right now? Uh, I was just saying height, like being kind of the archetypal example of how differences are spread out between men and women, where there's a lot of overlap in the middle. Okay. But then you've got your two peaks on either side, and you can apply that to all of these, I think. Yeah, your gonads, your testes, your ovaries, your uh, non-specific genitalia <laughs> that's in the middle. Or no, uh, yeah, that, that, I wrapped that up with genitals. But gonads are the ones that are inside, and then genitals are the ones that are on the outside. Your psychology and neurology. And then there's some other weird physical differences that I think probably have different evolutionary purposes. Like, for example, heat regulation. I. Uh, your nerve sensitivity and your other senses sensitivity your digestion your skin composition i'm okay two things first of all i just found out about the skin composition thing about six months ago oh yeah my entire life i thought men and women just had the same skin turns out men's skin is about 25 percent thicker and is more dense in collagen yeah it's got like the overlapping collagen where it's more of a grid whereas women's is kind of more like stripes and i was i was just really blown away like by that i was i i had no idea that we had different skin yeah i would say a lot of that probably has evolutionary reasons that one in particular um women have to stretch uh i was wondering digestion i didn't know about this what are the digestion differences if you know them um different metabolisms uh different dietary needs i mean like you know that they have the men's and the women's multivitamins and i always thought that was was weird bullshit yeah (laughs) no actually like there's slight dietary differences huh okay um so, yeah, if you've got the regular XX or XY um, thing going on, then you will have one set of these or the other set of these, or kind of somewhere in the middle of these two intersecting curves. Uh, you can also be intersex, where <laughs> that's defined as people whose bodies differ from the standard male or female. Maybe standard is a better word. It's like, what is it, less ableist? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Just because it hasn't been pejoratized yet that's not a word um intersex people about we'll get there we can pejoratize standard as well oh i'm sure we can pejoratize anything yeah about um 0.05 percent to two (laughs) percent depending on what you're basing this on of the population is born intersex so um i think the the lower number comes from them only counting people with ambiguous genitalia uh which would you know roll out like case women or anybody else who has like hyperandrogenism, which is where you just have elevated naturally occurring testosterone. 
I think um, a lot of people are probably familiar with. There's like this Muslim woman who I think has probably hyper hyperandrogenism, yeah. so she has a really fantastic beard and just rocks it. <laughs> I will briefly inter just throw in there because I I was perusing random skeptoid episodes today trying to find one doesn't matter but i found mm-hmm. one it was episode 463 transgender fact or fiction <laughs> and this one was hosted by um allison hudson because there was like a year or so hiatus that brian took from the podcast um and I, allison I don't hudson, know who that is. uh they're a i guess not like they didn't have a wikipedia page that i couldn't find so they're not that famous of a skeptic but they're in the community um they are a uh, male to female transgender person who was um they anyway they did the episode and it was fun so oh, cool. you can't listen to it unless you're a subscriber to the podcast oh. but you can read it on their website at skeptoid.com oh. and you just search for transgender fact or fiction and there'll be a link to it in the show notes for this and before or when it before the episode goes up i'll have just give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down that i'll put next to it to see if it's, <laughs> see if it's accurate well i'm assuming it was written by a trans person who's in the you said the rationalist community skeptic but skeptic community. yeah oh, that's probably good cool yeah i was talking about intersex people yeah, and a, a few examples of um, conditions that can cause someone to be intersex is the uh, androgen sensitivity syndrome, uh, the hyperandrogenism, adrenal hyperplasia, where uh, that is just your adrenal glands are producing too much of their chemicals in general, ovotestes, uh, gonadal dysgenesis, and man, there's a bunch. You can, I'll, I'll link to the Wikipedia, it's fun. And then I was going to talk about being transgender. So that's where your birth sex assignment, which is uh, usually based on your genitalia, is wrong. Or so you say. And then the opposite of that is cisgender, where trans being, I guess, other and cis being same. So either you are in agreement with your um, birth sex assignment or disagreement. People who identify as transgender or transsexual, I think that that latter word people don't like as much anymore are usually people who are born with typical male or female anatomies but feel like they've been born in the wrong body. For example, a person who identifies as transgender or transsexual might have typical female anatomy but feel like a male and seek to become a male by taking hormones or electing to have sex reassignment surgery. Going back to our first half of the podcast discussion about words meaning things and things becoming pejoratized, like transsexual is technically more accurate but not liked anymore right yeah and i I think it again really is just that it was used negatively for so long okay it's hard to actually keep a term for like i I think that maybe transgender is going to end up being the one that sticks which is kind of like eh, because it's not super accurate like you were just saying but like transvestite is super no-no tranny is bad like (laughs) there's a lot of slang that's also considered bad because it's all associated with the porn industry and objectification Hmm. but like and it's a drag because transgender, I think, at least you're right, at, as of yet, it's not been slanderized in the way that transsexual has. And yet, it seems to me like a valuable distinction. Like, if if you want to change your gender, both kind of how you identify with yourself and how you want to be identified, and not do anything to your sex parts, right? <laughs> to your plumbing or, or otherwise. <laughs> um, like, so if you're not going to do anything transsexually, you're just transgendered, right? And, and I realize that the words carry baggage, but if they didn't, that's that might yeah. be, if we were building them from scratch, that might be how we had put it. Yeah, and that would be a useful differentiation, too, because there's plenty of trans people that don't actually want to change their bodies. Yeah, so it's, I wonder what the word will be that will be okay, or if they'll if there'll just be a reclamation of transsexual. Well, or we may just be stuck with crappy words. Like we usually are. Yeah. We'll just transcend words and communicate via telepathy. Ooh, that'd be fun. Oh, yeah, another, like, jump back to the earlier conversation real quick. I just remembered that I was thinking about the way American Sign Language will refer to people. Like, the, the use of pronouns in sign language is point to a person or kind of point generally to a group of people and wave your finger around to show all of them. Nice. <laughs> Which, like, is great. That, that's the perfect way to do pronouns. You can't do that with words as easily. Yeah. I guess you could say them, singular, or all of them. But, yeah. All y'all. All y'all such a fun way to say a word or a phrase all right um yeah and then there's a bunch of theories as to whether trans identity is first of all real or people are making it up for attention uh (laughs) i don't think anyone who's met a trans person actually believes that they're making it up for attention oh plenty of people do um met trans people though oh yeah huh okay 
Well, I mean, like, you know, dogmatists, I guess, but... Or, you know, there's a lot of people that will say, oh, yeah, like, this is clearly something you're experiencing. However, it's a mental illness and should be treated with, like, basically deconversion therapy. You could say that about almost anything, though. Yeah, you can. (laughs) Sure. And and there is, like, a a non-asshole-ish way that there could have been, like, a supposition, right? If you're saying, Doc, I feel terrible, you know, 70 years ago, if you had a psychiatrist, which you probably didn't, um, I feel like I'm a man in a woman's body. And they'd be like, sounds like you're sick, right? That 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 wouldn't be... <laughs> if it the... was 80 years ago, they probably would have, like, diagnosed you with hysteria and then given you a vibrator. <laughs> right. Yeah, so 50 years ago. Um, but, but like I'm saying, so th- there is a, there's a way to view that where it's not necessarily mean, right? Like, if, if you went in presenting with that and it never happened to anybody else before, yeah. it sounds like you're sick. Um, not not that anyone is, and that, that's not how it is. Yeah, yeah. But from, if, from a... Uh, from squinting, that... that doesn't seem outlandish yeah well actually i think that's kind of interesting um like you can poll trans people and ask if there was some medicine you could take that would make you feel okay with the gender that you were born as would you take it and i feel like usually like it's close to half will say yes and half no Hmm. where like some people actually really feel like their experiences with being transgender really shaped them in a way that is integral to their personality and that other people like i suffered so much (laughs) Like, no, give me the pill. Or I would rather have not experienced that. It was the worst. I think Alicorn has um, a fiction that deals with that, although the fact that I'm saying that is kind of a spoiler. But Well, now you can't tell us what the story is. I kind of wouldn't like to do it anyway. It was really, it was an interesting thought experiment that didn't quite give away the plot twist. Okay. Uh, was there anything else that you all wanted to talk about on this topic? Nothing that I can think of. Hmm. Not yeah, I mean, as far as like wrap up stuff, I do think that it's really, you know, I could, if you had told me, hey, one of the co-hosts of the show is currently in the process of um, of transitioning, I would give like 50-50 odds as to whether or not they wanted to talk all about it or they wanted to kind of be left alone about it. <laughs> and I think it's really cool that, and not, not deriving anybody who wouldn't want to talk about it, but I think it's it's cool that you're like available and excited to talk about stuff. Yeah. Um, rather than like leave me alone, it's my business, which is a completely acceptable reply. I would assume anyone that is on a podcast or a YouTube channel or something would be the kind of person that would want to talk about it. Because they're. I already... think it depends. Some people yeah. like to keep their professional, if to the extent that this is a professional thing, and their their personal stuff separate, right? Yeah, yeah and um, some of it's pretty personal. Speaking of which, you've been on testosterone for three weeks. Yeah. How is that? Do you feel different? What's going on? Uh, I feel different. I am taking a low dose and then like up titrating. Um, to a normal male dose, or at least kind of, I guess I'm going to up titrate until I like, it's at where I like it. I like it right now though. It felt different pretty immediately and it took me a while to be like, is this just placebo? Um, Mm. but no, it, it seems consistently to, and this matches with other people's experience, uh, including just like men with, uh, hypogonadism where you just have more energy. Um, I feel like I have like lower anxiety, a bit like better self-esteem, self-confidence, Huh. Do you have uh, to from from the testosterone give you better self esteem and self confidence mm-hmm. and more energy? Can I get some of this shit? <laughs> <laughs> well, just get diagnosed with uh, hypogonadism. Although you don't want to have too much testosterone, maybe It'll a bit more. Give you a heart attack. To the extent that I don't have, like, I was thinking about this. You know, am I happy with my assigned gender? When you mentioned that fifty yeah. percent of people would say yes or no if they're transgender, um, I'm happy with whatever. But like, if I could, to, if I could pick, you know, if I was picking my body from like a, you know, out of these, you know, pick out <laughs> of these five hundred bodies. Monster Factory. If it was yeah. character creation at the beginning of a video game. Yeah, I pick somebody who looked more like Thor than who looked more like me. Okay. Right. And, and part, maybe because he's my favorite superhero. Maybe because and he's the, the most hand. attractive guy on the planet. Yeah. Right. Everyone um, would like to be more attractive and more powerful, right? But like, I'm trying. I'm. I'm. Then I was trying to think of like, is it just attractiveness? Because then like. Um, well, it's also it's like, masculine it's masculine that, that's the thing Cause is, i was is, gonna say i'm more into loki well yeah loki or like uh legolas is like you know he's like not masculine but male attractive right yeah so like but no if i had to pick i'd pick thor over those two and i'm not sure if that's you know favorite hero in C- cbn right. or if that's but what i would prefer so maybe that is part of my i don't know what you'd call it complex there yeah or like your preferred gender presentation I guess, but I, I guess my, at the end of the day, I've got really, you know, other than like everyone doesn't like how they look for the most part, but <laughs> other than like the, the generic stuff, I'm fine with what I've got. Yeah. That's, yeah. You cis by default. <laughs> I guess, uh, cis by default is kind of, if you're like 
yeah, I don't really feel like really attached to my assigned gender, but I also don't feel like I need to transition. Like whatever. <laughs> so yeah, whatever. I'll time just be I, whatever they gave me. I, I guess. think I think I just abide. <laughs> yeah. Like, and that, that's sort of my thing with most things. Like, whatever, man. Like, this is this is what I got dealt. Like, what am I gonna do? I could go to extreme lengths to try and change parts of it, but like, it's not that not extreme. The cost right now. Well, yeah, and it it and maybe it's not. Maybe it is within I mean, my like, like financial and life scope to try and do something, but I'm not even sure what I'd try and do. So I might as well just like you know what I'll just do what I'm doing. Yeah, it, it really wasn't hard. Uh, there's other states where you have to get diagnosed with gender dysphoria and like have being seen a psychologist and a diagnosis. And then there's even more extreme ones where I know I'm not sure if this is the case. I think this is still the case in some states. They make you present as the gender that you want to transition oh to for God, like. I heard about that. Yeah, but like pre hormones. Yeah, so pre-hormones, like a lot of. You have to start dressing <laughs> up as. Yeah. Oh my God. Are you kidding me? Yeah. So it could go risk like, you know, public harassment and violence and possible like some death. people can pull it off <laughs> if they have the right body type and look at and everything, yeah. even without hormones, but a lot of people can't. Yeah. There's no way I could walk down the street in a dress. Well, I mean, I could, but. And be read as like a cis woman. Exactly. Yeah. So um, I heard from some people before that when they first started taking testosterone, they got a lot more um, almost like uncontrollable urges and like, I don't know, just this, this desire that like you feel as a teenage boy, like, I want to do this. And I'm so frustrated. <laughs> and like, Arr! and is, have you gotten anything of that stuff? No, um, I researched a lot before starting hormones to see what to expect. And it kind of really varies based on the individual. Um yeah. Which you would expect, you know, having witnessed cis men and women having different personalities. So if you're someone who would be predisposed to having anger issues and, like, it runs in your family, then testosterone can definitely exacerbate that. Um, Also, you you could be on the wrong dose. Or I'm doing injections, and I think I might switch to a patch or a gel, because a common uh, issue some people had was that when the testosterone is first injected, you have a lot of it, and then... You can get, like, the crankiness and whatnot. And then when it dips towards the end, when you have to inject again, then you can get the, like, hypogonadism, <laughs> weakness and dizziness and exhaustion. Hmm. I should like, check that. Mood. I have all those things all the time. Oh, Maybe yeah. I'm just tired. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, uh, it's worth looking into. Yeah. Could be. Get oh, your levels choked. That raises another question I was going to ask. Are you aware of any cases where, with identical twins, one is transgender and one isn't? Is that, um, like, something that comes up in the literature? Because that'd be interesting. I... I haven't like specifically heard of that being the case. I know like I've heard about cases where one transitioned first and then the other one eventually did, but I've more often heard that usually, or, or not usually, but I've only heard of the cases where both twins transitioned. That speaks to a genetic component then. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. I mean, uh, it, it or definitely runs in families. Component while you're, yeah. At some no, point, um, it, because the... it can be like people that aren't twins too. It runs in families. There's, oh. it's been linked to. Uh, I think there's a, at least statistically significant uh, appearance of a genetic component. Okay. I don't think the Wachowskis or Wachowskis. I don't know how you say their name. The Matrix directors. I don't think that they're twins. No. But they were brothers. Now they're sisters. Yeah. And they both transitioned. I, mean, I think. I think around the same time, if not at the same time. No, there was a period of several years where uh, we we referred to them as the Wachowski siblings because. They were different genders. Nice. I think that was no, three, four years. That must have been the few years where they weren't famous because <laughs> it af- was... after after Matrix Reloaded, then they kind of fell off my radar for like ten years. So. Yeah, yeah. It was it was uh, right about the time of the third Matrix movie. <laughs> right on. You know, originally Switch was supposed to be female in the Matrix, but male in the real world. Yeah, That's I learned that from the amazing that podcast, they... the Doofcast. Oh, okay. Wait, cool. which character was Switch? Switch was the uh, everyone else one. wore black leather. Switch was the uh, the blonde girl with the short hair that wore white suits instead. Uh, did she really have much of a like role? I don't know. No, she, she, really. she was a she her was most, a tertiary character. Yeah, but. the the only significant thing about her is that she says not like this just before she's killed, <laughs> uh, which oh. was a really touching line. Uh, but um, no, she. I mean, she, she was just like you said, tertiary character, but. It would have been so much cooler. And that's what they apparently wanted, but they got pushed back. Yeah. Yeah, so... Because apparently you couldn't do that in 1999. Yeah. But yeah, that, that would have been interesting, because then, I mean, certainly... Uh, it, I tell you what, rather than me try and summarize it, check out Doof Media's uh, podcast on The Matrix. They did, they did a whole series on the Wachowski movies. Yeah, but I was going to say more than just The Matrix, I think. Specifically, the, the first one was on The Matrix, and it was amazing. So. Yeah. 
I remember uh, them being like, so we're going to try to not view everything they make through the lens of this is a coming out trans experience. Right. But there's a certain light <laughs> where you could kind of like cast on this where it all looks a little bit like a coming out trans experience. Well, certainly the Matrix. I hadn't thought to even view it through that lens. and I mean, no one did at the time. Right, I guess. But that was apparently one of the intended things behind it. And I loved it when that was brought to my attention. Mm-hmm. So yep. anyway, yeah, hard to plug. Cool. Let me take that back. It probably wasn't no one. There's always niche parts of the internet where someone is like dude this is such an allegory for this thing yeah. but it wasn't on the radar not in the popular consciousness at all fair enough yeah i really wonder about that like you can do literary analysis on a lot of things and show that it's all about you know the hero's journey is everything right and i wonder to what extent it's kind of people overreaching or maybe just just as likely as we as humans do all kind of have the same mentality and experiences like on a deep level and makes sense that everything would kind of follow these same themes like you do have to think about why nobody really likes um utopian fiction or peaceful video games generally (laughs) it's really hard to make a video game that's uh not combat like related animal crossing (laughs) i disagree it's not really hard it's just it's just that it's really easy to make one that is combat related i guess well it's also harder to get people to want to continue playing something that doesn't have some kind of at least a competitive element yeah. where uh because if you're not getting stronger and better then like what's the point right well Whether yeah but you can get stronger like... and better like stardew valley just by making a better farm or right, forming but... better social connections but like totally that tends not to be the mass market appeal uh you get like more niche audiences that like to play animal crossing and man remember pokemon snap that was a good non-violent game well, it was yeah, kind but, of violent. But it didn't have anything like the replay value of the regular Pokemon games. Yeah. I mean, if if they had kept making more games of Pokemon Snap, though, I think it would have continued to be popular. Because they came out with all those new Pokemon. They could have all different, you know. Uh, anyway. Not take pictures <laughs> of these ones. <laughs> but, yeah, I don't know. I think this is, well, I guess, on video games, I'll plug really quick. I just played um, Link's Awakening, the remake, which is not like mm. a remaster where they just like made it look better. They remade the whole game. And it was a lot of fun. It was I played that game, I think it's 26 years old now. Um, so I didn't play it 26 years ago. I played it something like 20 years ago on the Game Boy Pocket. Actually, I remember this. It was on the Pocket, the black and white one. And then I played it on the Game Boy Color because there's a dungeon that you can only beat if you can see the game in color. Oh. Because things are red and blue. Okay. Did they design it that way to like sell the console? They well to sell. I think it was held. to give her. I think it was to give an extra thing. Two people who, who played it on the new console. <laughs> I don't know if, if the game had enough pull to like push people into buying the console for it, but it could have. The perk is the huge payoff. You get to choose a red or blue tunic, which either the blue one doubles your, uh, or I guess halves the damage you take, and the red one doubles the damage you give. So it's it's a it's a huge be- benefit to be able to beat this dungeon. So yeah. Huh. In the black and white version, do you not have different tunics? Uh. N- there would be no way to differentiate them unless they had different styles. There were ones where you got different tunics. I played A Link to the Past just before this one because Switch lets, lets you play the old games now. And it was, uh, it gave you the option to, I think you got like an upgraded defense or something, but it looks maybe about the same, but it's still black and white-ish. Uh, no, but in, in Link's Awakening, you only get the one tunic unless you're playing through it the other way, so with color. Well, fuckers, I think we should wrap up. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, I got to give a big shout out this week to Richard Meadows for their support of our, of our podcast. You can tell we're really distracted, but Richard, thank you very much. This is awesome. <laughs> this is the thinking of the patron thing? Yeah. Okay, awesome. I jumped right to it before you tried to, before you tried to wrap up. Well, dude. Rock on. Snuck it in there. Yeah. And, and now Richard we have to knows. thank Richard. You the bomb. We've been forced to thank you. Man. But we, I would voluntarily thank you. <laughs> yes. If I had to take a pill where I could thank you or not thank you, I'd take the one where I'd take, thank you. <laughs> All right. We're falling asleep, so good night. <laughs> yes. Sorry for not doing feedback and the less wrong stuff. We'll get to that next time. Promise. Okay. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.